Hey everyone, welcome back to Small Batch Devs. My name is Austin. And I'm Elliot. Today we're going to be introducing you to PWAs. And stick around to the end because we'll show you how to integrate one into our Angular blog application very easily. And if you enjoy this video and learn a thing or two, make sure you hit the subscribe button, like the video, and maybe leave us a comment on what you thought of the video. But without any further ado, let's jump into it. So Elliot, tell us a little bit about what PWAs are. Sure, so a PWA or progressive web app allows us to use HTML, JavaScript, CSS to write web applications that feel like native mobile or desktop apps. So PWAs can access local files on your device, they can access the hardware, and other native features to your device, such as push notifications. And we can utilize frameworks like Angular and React to give us a big boost in easily integrating PWAs into our existing or new projects. So why would I want to use a PWA? So traditionally, if you wanted to create mobile applications, you would have to learn multiple programming languages in order to deploy to multiple uh, operating systems, such as iOS or Android. But with PWAs, you can use that web development knowledge to build a PWA on top of your web application, which means you don't have to leave your web development comfort zone. PWAs bring all the great features of your native uh, mobile applications without your users having to download and install uh, the application. Yeah, what this means is that your users will see a button or banner on your website that will invite them to add your application to their home screen or desktop. This means you don't need to go to your device's native app store in order to get the app on their phone. Yeah, and PWAs also extend the ability of your application to work without the presence of an internet connection. So let's talk a little bit about how PWAs work. Yeah, at the core, a PWA is based around a service worker, and this service worker is just another file in your app. The PWA acts as a network proxy, which controls the cache around your app, kind of like a bubble. It controls outgoing and incoming requests and caches these responses so that your app can use them when it makes the same response in the future, making your app really fast. It also uses this cache when your device goes offline so it still looks and feels as if the app is still connected to the internet. The service worker even lives on after the user has closed your application or tab in their browser. It still runs in the background. The service worker also ensures that your app is up to date. So whenever you as a developer push code to your server, new updates and features and whatnot, um, the, server, the service worker will ensure that the, on the user side, the code is up to date. Nice. Yeah. Very helpful. Very helpful. So let's go ahead and talk about the installation process for upgrading your already existing app um, to a PWA. So we had to go ahead and update our Angular version to Angular 10. Um, we just want to make sure we're on the most recent versions for everything. Um, so we use this command right here to update everything. But you can also check out the Angular update guide, um, which we'll provide a link for down in the description, um, just in case your app is very behind on the updates. So once you've got your Angular app up to date and running the latest version, the next step is to actually use Angular to add the Angular PWA and service worker to your app. And you can do that by running this command right here, which will take care of all of it for you. And you'll see the uh, command that has a project name at the end of it. You can just put the name of your Angular project, which can be found in your Angular JSON file. Running this command will add several files to your application, including some icon files, which you can replace with your own logos for your application. There are two important files in this update that we do want to cover, so let's go ahead and jump into the code. So the first file we've got open on the screen is the manifest.webmanifest file. And you can see here it's just got some basic information that the browser needs to know about our PWA to enhance the experience for the user. You can see we've got a name, a theme color, a background color, and a bunch of different icons that the browser will use to display our app in the user's phone, on the user's desktop, 
and in various sizes. The second file we're going to look at is the ngsw-config file, and this file controls how your service worker operates. It has information on what to cache and when. If we take a look at the file um, in the assets groups array, um, you can see that we have a bunch of files in here listed, and we also have some uh, install and update mode um, fields for how we actually go and fetch these files. You can see we have some prefetch, which means they go out and get these files immediately. Um, and a little further down, we also use lazy, which means it just goes out and gets these files whenever we actually need them. So now we've got our terminal open and we're going to build the production version of our Angular application. And to do that, we just simply run ng-build hyphen hyphen prod. And the reason we have to use the prod build is because this is the only environment config that currently uses the service worker. So basically you cannot test your service worker um, unless you're building in prod mode. Another important note is that you can't use ng-serve to test your service worker changes. So you're going to have to use a separate HTTP server um, to serve up your code. And we're going to use HTTP server, um, which you can install using this command. And this is actually what Angular recommends that you install and download um, for your testing of your application. Once you've got that installed, you can then use this command to run the HTTP server on your local computer, serving up the dist files that you just created with your prod build. So we're now in our Firefox browser and you can navigate to localhost port 8080 or whatever port you told the HTTP server to run on. And it is important that you use the word localhost instead of your IP address for your local computer, which is the 127001 IP address. And this is because the service worker looks for localhost to determine if it's in a development environment. So this is a security precaution, actually. A service worker will only run if the URL is on localhost uh, or is served over HTTPS so that people can mess with the files that the service worker is handling. So now that we're in our Firefox browser, we're gonna open the dev tools and navigate to the application tab. And you can see we already have a service worker registered. If we go to the network tab, um, you can see that all these files are actually being uh, served up by the service worker. Um, and that is because the service worker cached them uh, when it was registered. So now let's do something crazy and turn off our network connection. In Chrome, you would find the work offline mode in the network tab, but in Firefox, we do have to go through a couple hoops. So we're gonna go up to the top, hit this hamburger menu, hit web developer, and then check this work offline. And as soon as we reload the page, you'll see that it works fine, but we have no data. And so our app is still running with the service worker's help. So now let's talk about updating our code and testing that updated code along with the service worker. We're going to make a quick change to some of our HTML, something that's easy to spot, and then we're going to rebuild the production version of our application with ng-build hyphen hyphen prod. So we went ahead and changed just our h3 tag for our um, newsletter, and now it's saying blog boy instead of newsletter. And then we just went ahead and ran the ng-prod, um, ng-build rather, dash dash prod command um, in order to build it. So go ahead and run your serve command. And when you get to your browser and reload, you'll notice that your changes haven't taken effect. So we're here back on the blog in our Firefox and we just hit reload and it is online because we're getting data, but join our newsletter hasn't changed changed to join our blog boy Why is what that? gives what gives so the reason our app hasn't updated yet is because the service worker prioritizes speed over updates so basically it served up whatever app files it had cached and in the background it is downloading all the updates to our application so now if we refresh one more time you will see the updates and there we go and say boy that's probably because I built the application before we added the boy. <laughs> so for this next part, we did need to switch to Chrome because we couldn't find the button in Firefox, but that's besides the point. So one last thing before you go is that to get this PWA on your desktop or on your mobile device, you will just navigate to this URL 
And in Chrome, there's gonna be this add to home screen button or install button in the URL bar. You just click that and boom, it is on your device and it will run in its own window if you're on desktop, acting like its own application. And I will add to that real quick. If you are on an iOS device, you will need to use Safari in order to get the PWA on your home screen. So today we covered a brief introduction into the world of PWAs and service workers. We talked about how to install and add one to your Angular application, as well as the testing requirements and environment requirements when dealing with a service worker on your development machine. As always, thank you very much for watching this video. We hope you learned something. Uh, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell, and maybe follow us on the social medias. Yes. All the social medias, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Peace. Uh, even if the device goes offline. Can you say what I was supposed to say? Shut up. It's okay, I'll just say it. <laughs>